Inshallah, uh, for today's khutbah, I'm going to stay on a, a general theme that I've been talking about uh, for the last month or so. And that is, uh, what does the Quran actually say with respect to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Many of Muslims in the West uh, that are not familiar with uh, the Arabic of the Quran, or Muslims who even are familiar with the Arabic of the Quran, uh, do not engage uh, at a very deep level with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a story uh, from the ulama, um, the hadith, which we were told that a rabbi one time came to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the, the rabbi said, Sif li habibak. He said, uh, describe to me your beloved. So the rabbi knew that the Prophet ﷺ was beloved to Sayyidina Umar. He just knew that. So he didn't say, Sifli Muhammadan ﷺ or Sifli Rasulullah, Sifli Habibak. And Sayyidina Umar said, how can I possibly do that? And the rabbi was taken aback by that. What do you mean? Describe him for me. He said, I can't do it. He said, Sifli Khulaqa Habibik. Just describe to me his khuluq, his character then. Just describe his character. He said, I can't do that either. So the rabbi, he goes to Imam Ali, karamallahu wajha. He says, Sifli khuluqa habibik. Describe for me the, uh, the character of your beloved. And e even Imam Ali said, I can't do that. How can I do that? What a, what a uh, tremendous task. He said, why can't you do it? So Imam Ali, he asked the rabbi. He said, Sifli ad dunya Describe the dunya to me. Describe to me the beauty of the dunya, the, the, uh, uh, the beauty, this and that of the dunya, the pleasure of the dunya. And he said, that's going to take till next week. How can I sit here and describe to you the dunya? And Imam Ali said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Mata'u dunya qaleel. He said, no, Allah says in the Quran, the, the pleasures of the dunya are small. But about the Prophet وسلم, he says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُكٍ عَظِيمٍ he says, verily you, and we translated this last time, just to give a sense. Of course, there's no real translation of the Qur'an, but just to give a sense of what the Qur'an is saying here. Verily, verily, you dominate vast character, magnificent character, the character of the Prophet This is extremely important. Let's look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet in the Qur'an. Allam Iqbal, he said that when you, if you want to taste what the Qur'an actually teaches, Approach the Qur'an like the Sahaba heard the Qur'an. How did the Sahaba hear the Qur'an? Like the first time that you hear the Qur'an. That's how you should approach the Qur'an so you can taste its meanings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا It says, verily, verily. لَقَدْ is a form of major emphasis in Arabic. So if you go back to your work after Jummah and somebody asks you, did you go to Jummah? And he say, ذَهَبْتُ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ I went to the masjid. And he says, I don't believe you. So then he said, قَدْ ذَهَبْتُ قَدْ Yes, indeed, I went. And he says, no, I, I still don't believe you. لَقَدْ ذَهَبْتُ And he says, okay, I believe you now. Take it easy. Double emphasis. It's lam of tawqeed, of emphasis. And this harf is called harf tahqiq, for actualization. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ And kana is a verb in Arabic, the verb to be. And when it's in reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its attributes, it's it's transchronic. It's beyond time. It transcends time. Inna hu kana tawaba. Verily, he was, is, and will always be tawaba. And Allah subhanahu wa taala, He can honor a entity with the verb kana, which means that this entity is honored by Allah subhanahu wa taala and is owned by Allah subhanahu wa taala. Laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah. So here's the idafa. The rasul is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is idafa of tash tashrif or takrim, annexation of honor. Rasulullah, the messenger of God, fi rasulillah, in the messenger of God. Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just said you have the messenger of God as uswatun hasana? What is the uh, significance of fi, of this preposition? You have in the messenger of God, fi rasulillah. These are nuances in the Arabic that do not carry into the English or into any other language. The fi here, according to the exegetes of the Qur'an, denotes exclusivity with the Prophet ﷺ, only in the Messenger, and immersion in the Messenger. The Prophet ﷺ is immersed in khuluq hasan, that he's immersed in uswatun hasana, 
in a character, a comportment, an example that is beautiful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oftentimes in the Quran, again something that's often missed in translation, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Prophet with indefinite uh, nouns or adjectives, indefinite, nakira. And according to Ibn Malik in the Alfiya, one of the meanings of the indefinite article, the tanween, is that this entity uh, is unlimited, is unrestricted, is beyond comprehension. It's a way of praising. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكِ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And this statement by itself is amazing. And every Muslim, Muslim should have this memorized. When I go to churches, I tell them this is the equivalent of John 3.16. We see 3.16 everywhere. Go to a sports, watch a football game, you see it written everywhere. What does it mean? This is the essence of our belief about the Prophet ﷺ. 21.107 of the Quran. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكِ إِلَّا رَحْمَةٍ لِلْعَالَمِينَ so we have ithbat ba'da nafi, which is for strong tawkeed. You have an affirmation after a negation, like la ilaha illallah. The translation, there is no deity worthy of worship, that's not what it says. It says no God, but God. It's very strong, it's very emphatic. Wa ma arsalnaka. We did not send you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the Prophet sallallahu in the second person in the Quran. He doesn't say wa ma arsalna muhammadan. Ka, kaful khitab. We did not send you, it's very personal. Speaking directly to the Prophet Sallallahu Illa, an exception for strong emphasis. Rahmatan, nakira. It's indefinite. Unlimited mercy. Unfathomable mercy. Mercy that is not restricted. Mercy to everything. Interestingly enough too, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the ulama point out, He uses a noun here. He doesn't use a verb. He doesn't say, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ illa an tarham al alamin or something like that. We didn't send you except that you show mercy to people. Allah says, you are mercy. You are rahmatan. This is your that, this is your essence. That your mercy, lil alamin, to all of the worlds. So he uses the indefinite oracle. The mercy of the Prophet is something that is unrestricted, something that is unbelievable how he showed mercy. And we should study these examples from Sirah. We mentioned this the other day. It's very important that when we read the Sirah, sometimes we have to stop and we have to smell the roses, as it were. We know the story of the Prophet ﷺ when he went to Ta'if and he was rejected from the city and stoned out of the city. ﷺ. And he had to pass by these two lines that were kicking people kicking and punching him and, and spitting on him and throwing stones at him. And he sat under the tree, and we know the story, that the angel descended <clears throat> and said, give the word and this city is destroyed. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, He said, no, I have hope in their descendants. Think about this. Think about this ajib mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this vast character, this vast rahmatan, this unlimited undefinable mercy of the Prophet ﷺ. The other day a, a brother bought, brought me his son, make dua for my son. So I make dua, dua for the son. But what if I made dua for the children of that son, who, who I haven't even seen yet? They're going to come in the future. And I make dua, I make supplication for the children of the children of the children of my Muslim brother. But what about if I made dua for the children of the children of the children of my enemies who have just stoned me out of the city and have just humiliated me. What kind of character is that? This is what the Prophet ﷺ did. This is rahmatan lil alameen, an unlimited mercy to all the worlds. The Prophet ﷺ, one time he came into the masjid and he saw a man and he was brokenhearted in the masjid in tears. And the Prophet ﷺ said, what's wrong with you? And he said, oh, I've done this and I've done that. He said, I don't want to hear it. Just come here. Just come over here. Let's sit. Raise your hands. Repeat after me. Allahumma maghfiratuk awsa' min dhunubi. Pray this dua with me. Oh Allah, your forgiveness is more vast than my sins, my transgressions. And he said, qum, qad ghafar Allahu lak. Now stand up, your sins have been forgiven. The Prophet 
had a deep concern for the ummah, not just for the ummah, a deep concern for all of humanity, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was repeating that verse all night long, all night long, in to adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk wa in taghfir lahum fa innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim. Our mother Aisha said that he recited this verse the whole night. Qama Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi ayatin min al-Qur'an layla, the entire night he's reciting this verse. If you punish them, they are your servants, but if you forgive them, if you forgive them, then you are great and wise. And then she said he collapsed into sajda, collapsed. And she heard him say, Allahumma ummati, Allahumma ummati. Praying for the ummah, Allahumma, what does it mean? It's a vocative address. The ulama say, when you say Allahumma, it means you're calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by all of his names and attributes. The ones you don't, the ones you know, and the ones you don't know. It's very troubling these days. We turn on the satellite television and we see these anti-Muslim shows. The Christians, they have Jesus or Muhammad behind them. Let's talk about both. Let's compare the two. And as a Muslim watching Christians do this, it's very strange because that's not an equal comparison. Isa alayhi salam, according to them, is God. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, we don't believe he's God. He's a messenger of God. He's the best of creation. They should say Jesus or Allah. Right? But nonetheless, people like to make comparisons. Obviously, Isa alayhi salam is rahmatan. There's no doubt about it. But there's a story in a Christian source, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10. Isa alayhi salam tells us, Hawariyun. According to a Christian source, he says, when you, he sends them out on preaching and healing for da'wah, for khuruj, fi sabirillah. And he tells them that when you go to a city, if you should be rejected by that city, Shake the dust of that city off your heels, for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will fare better on the day of judgment than that city. This is what he says. That if a city rejects you, shake the dust, meaning they're going to go to hell forever. The cities of the plain, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Qawm al will have a better time on the day of judgment than those, than those people. You want to compare, look at the Prophet Wasallam in Ta'if, who is not only rejected by the people, he stoned out of the city, abused and, and, and reviled. There's blood, his feet are soaking in his own blood. He loses consciousness, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bal arju. No, I have hope in their descendants. This is khulukun azim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's very interesting, beautiful books that we need to read about the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A certain type of literature called khasais, or khususiyat, and nabuwa. The specialities or special properties of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's so a book by Imam Izzuddin ibn Abdus Salam, rahimahullah ta'ala, in which he lists the tafdeel of the Prophet, enumerating how the Prophet's greatness is greater than any other Prophet. And this is interesting because his son approached him one day and said, tell me about the greatness of the Prophet And just off the top of his head, he was able to name these 42 things. How many things can we name? One of the things he mentioned were, were the miracles, the mu'jizat of the Prophet the mu'jizat, which we believe in, no doubt about it. We believe in them. And he says, look at the mu'jizat of the Prophet ﷺ. Because they're adhar and they're akbar. They're more apparent and they're greater than the miracles of those who came before him. ﷺ. So Isa ﷺ could raise the dead. And as the poet said, yes, Isa ﷺ bi'ibnillah raised the dead. But the Prophet ﷺ, he raised nations. Nations that were spiritually dead that did not have the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that uh, the difference between one who is alive and dead is like the difference between the one who remembers his Lord and the one who doesn't, being spiritually dead, people walking around in their own coffins, not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they're dead and buried, and who remembers them? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they remembered him. فَاذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ he raised nations, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now there are some hadith. If you read Kitab al-Shifa, Al-Qadi Ayyad, <clears throat> there's hadith Imam Bayhaqi mentions. These are weak. Some of them are weak. But there's hadith in these books. Hassan al-Basri relates, rahimahullah ta'ala, that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, my daughter has died in a certain wadi. She's di she has died. Can you help her? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes there. And he says, Ya Fulana, Ihi bi ibnillah. And she comes out. This is mentioned in our books. It's not a strong sanat, but these things are mentioned. 
But the real miracle is seeing the transformation of societies in 23 years. This is unparalleled in history. That in 23 years, the way people think is different. It's not just the way people do business, the way people interact with each other. The way, the way people think was transformed by the message of the Prophet The way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you talk to your neighbor, the way you deal in politics, economics, all of these things have been changed in 23 years. Raising the world from the dark ages into the light. This is a true mu'jiza that's everlasting of the Prophet And you say, Jesus السلام, he can heal the blind. And Imam Izzuddin ibn Abdul Salam, he mentions this. Yes, it's mentioned in the Quran as well. But he mentions the miracle of the Prophet is more apparent than that. How is it more apparent? He says that Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas relates that at the Battle of Uhud, a companion named Qatada, his eye had actually been taken out of its socket and was resting on his cheek. And the Prophet, not only did he restore the eyesight, but he actually put the eye back and it worked fine. And he had 20 20 vision. It's mentioned by Al Uqayli in, the, in Qadi Iyad, Al Shifa. Uqayli says, My father, he had grown old and a whiteness glazed over his eyes so he couldn't see. And the Prophet, وسلم, he took some of his blessed saliva and he wiped over my father's eye. He said, I saw my father at 80 years old threading a needle. At 80 years old. He was threading a needle. This is the, the mu'jiza of the Prophet ﷺ. He mentions Musa salam, who struck the rock with his staff and gushes and springs gushed forth. A mu'jiza of Musa salam. But the miracle of the Prophet ﷺ is adhar. It's even more apparent than that. <clears throat> because somebody might say, well, sometimes rivers gush through rocks and so on and so forth. It's mentioned in the hadith, Anas ibn Malik, in Bukhari and Muslim rigorously authenticated hadith that once the Sahaba had a shortage of water, the Prophet ﷺ said, bring me a vessel. They brought him a vessel and he put his hand into the vessel and he removed his hand, it's full of water. That water came through his fingers ﷺ. So the, the, the fuqaha, they mention in the books of fiqh, they say, what is the greatest water in the universe? So it's, oh, the Nile River. No, 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 Zamzam. Zamzam's the greatest. No, there's, there's fountains, there's springs in paradise. Salsabil, Tasneem, these are greater. The poet said, Afdalul miya'i ma'un qad naba' bayna asabi'in nabiyin muttaba'. He said, the greatest water, the greatest water, the most exalted, the holiest type of water is the water that gushed forth from the fingers of the obeyed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. His miracles were adhar. Another example, Qatajaakum Nurun wa Kitabun Mubin, an indefinite article again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say to nawiru or something like that. He doesn't use a verb. He says, You are nur, a nur that is nakira, undefined, unrestricted. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Prophet. ﷺ. The indefinite article. When you start reading the Quran, you should notice these things. That the mushrikeen and the, the kufar, meaning Ahlul Kitab, Jews and Christians and mushrikeen, they're not going to break away from their kufr until al bayyina comes to them. Clear evidence. Why is there a definite article here according to the uh, exegetes? al bayyina Because this is ahdiya, meaning that they were already expecting someone to come. There was an expe expectation for al bayyina to come. This is why there's a definite article. But who is al bayyina Rasulum min Allah. Rasulun, not Rasulullah. Right? Rasulun min Allah. It's nakira, it's indefinite. Meaning such a great messenger, undefined, unlimited, beyond comprehension. A great messenger, an unrestricted messenger, a universal messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this in the Quran many, many times in reference to the Prophet sallallahu All of them indefinite. We start noticing these things when we read the Quran, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, sometimes in da'wah, and I've done this myself, when we're speaking to like a Christian audience, we want to stress the importance of Isa alayhi salam. It's very important for us. 
for Christians and non-Muslims in general, even Muslims, to know <coughs> that we love Isa salam. So one time I was on stage in an interfaith dialogue and I said, you know, the Quran mentions the name of Isa alayhi salam five times more than the name of the Prophet This is true. 25 times Isa alayhi salam is mentioned and five times the Prophet is mentioned. Four times as Muhammad and once as Ahmad But we have to remember that this might put a, a, a negative effect or an incorrect effect in the mind of the listener that we value Isa alayhi we believe that Isa alayhi salam is greater or five times greater than the Prophet So that might give the impression to someone that I can just believe in Isa alayhi salam as I do and I'm fine. And they become complacent in their kufr. No, of course not. Why is the Prophet sallallahu only mentioned a few times in the Quran? Because the Quran is being revealed to the Prophet sallallahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to him directly. If you take a short surah in the Quran, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكْ وَوَدَعْنَ عَنْكَ وِزْرَكْ أَلَّذِي أَنْكَدَ ظَهْرَكْ What are these kaf, kaf, ka, ka, ka? There's 11 references in this short surah to the Prophet ﷺ. And how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak to the Prophet ﷺ? Alam nashrah. This uh, Hamza here is Hamza of taqreer, the Hamza of a rhetorical question. The rhetorical question, there's no, there's no answer to be expected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to remind you of something. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al Don't you remember what happened to them? Everyone knows, it's established. It's to remind the Prophet ﷺ. Alam nashrah, nashrah is plural, first common, plural, it's jam'un, this is nunu ta'zim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the plural when addressing the Prophet sallallahu in the second person, because this shows that the object that's being addressed is also ta'zim, is also tafdeel, is also great. And that's the Prophet sallallahu alam nashrah, laka sadrak. And this lam is lamu ta'leel, that's brought forward to create tashwiq and anticipation. What is the maf'ul bihi? What is the direct object here? Have we not expanded because of you, your chest? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expanded the chest, the sadr, the heart of the Prophet sallallahu And the ulama point out, Musa alayhi salam made dua. What did he say? Qadr rabbi shrahli sadri. Oh my Lord, expand for me my breast, my, my courage, my heart. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this for the Prophet sallallahu talab, without even requesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that. This shows the greatness of the Prophet sallallahu the magnificence of the Prophet sallallahu The Musa alayhi salam was at the, the edge of the Red Sea and the army of Fir'an was coming. And, and the Bani Israel, they said, we're about to be overwhelmed. We're going to be killed. We're going to be slaughtered. Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. No way. With me is my Lord, Ma'ya. He mentioned him, himself first, Ma'ya Rabbi, then his Lord. But when the Prophet ﷺ was in the cave with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq had fear, what did he say? Inna Allah ma'ana. He mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. Allah is with us. This shows, these are subtleties in the Arabic that pass by us many times. Very interesting, very beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Says in Surah Tawbah, Wallahu wa Rasuluhu, a haqu an yurdu hu. That Allah and His Messenger, it is more befitting that you please Him. What is Him? Allah and His Messenger are two entities. Why is there a mufradul ghaib? Why is there a third person masculine singular uh, pronominal suffix? Allah mentions two. Wallahu wa Rasuluhu, a haqu an yurdu hu. Why who? Why not huma? This is a grammatical error? Astaghfirullah. What does this mean? That means that there's an intimate relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's not just a delivery man. He's not someone who delivers the risala and goes away. You never see him again. You never contact him again. There's an intimate relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and between us and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said it himself, What did tu law anni ra'aytu ikhwani? I wish I could have seen my ikhwan. I wish I could have seen them. Not I wish, what did to? I would have loved to have seen them. Loved, would, mawadda. <clears throat> I would have loved to have seen him. Awalasna, they said, Awalasna ikhwanaka ya Rasulullah, aren't we your ikhwan? The Sahaba said, 
He said, no, you're my companions, ashabi, who are the ikhwan, those who come after, who never saw me, but are willing to sacrifice their wealth and their families just to lay eyes on me one time. I wish I would, I would have loved to have seen them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a singular pronoun when speaking about himself and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A singular pronoun. Because he says, مَن يُتِعِ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ Allah." Whoever obeys the messenger is obeying Allah. This is a subtlety that's lost in translation. This is a subtlety that's lost by the people of Ahl al-Kitab. Isa alayhi salam makes a similar statement. The father and I are one. They say he's claiming to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astaghfirullah. He's not talking about ittihad or hulul, tajassud, these types of things. Mingling or union or divine incarnation. No. He's talking about a, re a relational unity that the, uh, the obedience to the messenger is the same obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot obey Allah and disobey the messenger. It's impossible. You cannot obey the messenger and disobey Allah. Their obedience is the same. This is according to Imam al-Qurtubi in his tafsir of this ayah. Why is there a singular pronoun used in this verse? This is what he says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes an oath by the life of the Prophet sallallahu an oath by the life. There are people who read the Qur'an. This is what is ajib to me. There are people who read the Qur'an and they say the Qur'an says that the Prophet is only a delivery man. And all of these other things you say about him, this is all bid'ah and it's kufr and it's haram and it's developed later. Do you know what the Qur'an says about the Prophet sallallahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La amruka. He takes an oath by the life of the Prophet sallallahu And Ibn Qayyim radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that Allah does not take an oath by anything except that it's exalted. By your life, by your life. And Ibn Abbas said, I did not hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take an oath by the life of any other person. Allah says, What duha? What layli idha saja? What is duha? La mu qasam. Wa wul qasam. What duha? I swear by the duha. What layli idha saja? And by the night when it is still. Imam al Tabari said, What duha is the face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى is the qalb, the heart of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by the life, the face, and the heart of the Prophet مَا وَدْعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Because what is, the, what is the sabab al-nuzul of this ayah? There was a fatra in the revelation. There was a break in the revelation. And the mushrikeen were making fun of the Prophet They say, oh, your, your, your shaitan has left you, as Umm Jamil said, astaghfirullah. So the Prophet sallallahu he, uh, he took all of this abuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, takes an oath by your face, by your heart. Your Lord has not left you, nor is he angry, period. It's very interesting. Qala is fi'l muta'addi. This is a transitive verb, which means it takes an object. Just like wadda'a is a transitive verb. There is an object. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala laysa qalaak. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never say, will never even suggest that he hates the Prophet sallallahu Even when he's negating the statement, qala means to hate, to abhor something. So translations, they don't do it justice. The Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he angry with you. There is no you. Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he angry, period. He's not even going to suggest that he hates the Prophet sallallahu it's indefinite again. It's unrestricted. It's unfathomable that the khair of the Prophet in the next world, you can't even think about it. It's indefinite. And soon will thy Lord give you something and immediately you'll be pleased by it. Immediately you'll be pleased by it. Soon will thy Lord give you something, and immediately you're going to be pleased. But Imam Suyuti says, when this is revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Lan arda wa wahidun min ummati fin nar. I will never be pleased. While one person from my ummah is in the fire. This is someone who has deep concern for the ummah. He's not someone who just delivered the message and, and took off. This is someone who has a connection with the ummah. This is someone that we have to have a connection with. It's very, very important. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal asr, inna insana la fi khusr. Wal asr, what is asr? There's difference of opinion. If we study tafsir, some say asr means the time of asr, because this is when people come home 
and they start reflecting about their lives. Very reflective time of the day. Some say this is Salat al-Asr, which is the middle prayer, according to many of the ulama. Some say Fajr, the majority, the Jumhur say this is Asr, the middle prayer. It's a reference to Salat al-Asr. Some say it's Asr in general, time, from the beginning of time, the, the creation of Adam alayhi salam until the end of time. Ibn Abbas says, or I'm sorry, Fakhruddin al-Razi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that this refers to the time of the messenger, the zaman of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi alayhi wa sallam, the best time in the time thereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes an oath in the Quran by the life of the Prophet, by the face of the Prophet, by the heart of the Prophet, by the zaman, the time of the Prophet, and by the makan of the Prophet. When he says, لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد so the ulama, they, they ask the question, why does this surah begin with a negation? La uqasimu. Why la uqasimu? I don't swear or I do swear. So the ulama say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this city is so great. This is a sense of the, of the meaning, just to give a sense of it. This city is so great, I don't even have to swear by this city. You, you Quraysh, you already know the greatness of this city. You know the, uh, the Walad, the Walid and the Walad, Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. You know what they did here. وَأَنْتَ حِلٌ And this is a, a hal, according to one opinion of the first verse. Meaning, you know the greatness of this city. You know the history of this city. You know Ibrahim, you know Ismail alayhi salam. You know their history. But yet you're trying to kill. You're trying to make halal the blood of this messenger? Who is, who is amongst you, this is the whole reason why you've been preserved. Why do you think that is? You have security, perennial security. Why? Because you're so great. Why do you have this security? Because of the Prophet wasallam was going to be raised amongst them. This is why. There's many other examples we can give. We're running out of time. In Surah Teen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Teeni was Zaytun. Watini was Zaytun. So what is teen? The fig. So many of the ulama, Abdullah ibn Abbas, who is called the exegete of the Quran, the founder of exegesis of the Quran. says the teen is a reference to Jabal Judi. Jabal Judi is the mountain, one of the lower uh, peaks of the Ararat mountain system in Turkey, in Anatolia. And the Safina of Nuh, السلام, that's where it stopped. And apparently there was a lot of figs in that area. So Ibn Abbas says, this is a reference to the Sharia of Nuh salam. Zaytun, what is Zaytun? A reference to Ibrahim salam. Because in Jerusalem and around that uh, Palestine, specifically in Jerusalem, there are a lot of olives. There's a mountain just uh, away from the Temple Mount called the Mount of Olives, where apparently Isa salam used to pray there, Jabal al-Zaytun. Mutini was Zaytun, Wuturi Sinin. What is Turi Sinin? Mount Sinai where Musa alayhi salam received the Sharia, the Torah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again taking an oath by great things, I swear by the Sharia of Nuh alayhi salam, of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and the Israelite prophets after him, Musa alayhi salam and those after him. And by this city, We have created Al-Insan, which most of the exegetes take as something that's general, the human being in general has the best form. But some of the Mufassirin say this is a direct reference to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning the previous shara'ir, the previous shari'as of the messengers, they all bore witness to the greatness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are tafasir that's in our tradition. Nobody's making these things up. This is not some weird uh, Sufi goofy type of uh, tafsir. It's not some weird type of bid'ah, tafsir. This is in our tradition. We have to embrace our tradition. Our tradition has three aspects. Islam, wa iman, wa ihsan. This is what we have to implement as Muslims. Unfortunately, there's a, there's, there's a polarization amongst many Muslims that are formalists, or those who are... We have to take lessons from the Qur'an. We have to be balanced as the Prophet ﷺ was balanced. As Al-Fatiha tells us to be a balanced nation. Balance. Where is this ayah? Right in the middle of Baqarah, verse 143 out of 286. Right in the middle is not, not an accident. We take our tradition. We love our tradition. 
and we follow the Prophet This is called ittiba', and I, I mentioned this many times in the past. Ittiba' is to follow the Prophet in his outward and inward manifestations. To follow him, not just outwardly, not just inwardly. Both of these are false. Both of these are dalala. We're talking about outward and inward. Ittiba' of the Prophet and i'tisam. وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبِلِ اللَّهِ I'tisam is the word that's used for a man who's drowning in the ocean and they throw him a line and he holds onto that line. That grip that he's holding, that rope, that's called i'tisam. This is how we should hold on to the sunnah of the Messenger bin The Prophet says, hold on to my sunnah and the righteous khulafa after me. Like you're biting onto it with your molars. This is a very interesting Yani majazi, isti'ara. It's a metaphor. This is where you rip meat when you eat jerky. You know, it's very strong. Look at the metaphor he's using. Buy onto my sunnah in its inward and outward manifestations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى ساداتنا وإمتنا أبي بكر عمر عثمان وعلي ورضي الله تعالى عن أصحاب رسول الله أجمعين يقول الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب العزيز بعد أن نقول وعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيد محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالم إنك حمد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالم إنك حمد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك بنور وجهك الكريم بحقك عليك حسن الخاتم عند الممات لنا ولأحبابنا ولجميع المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وبارك لنا فيما فيما أعطيت مقينا شر ما قضيت ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك وصلى الله على سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله